I just got back from U Camp and boy was it fun. I can't wait to share a few highlights with you as well as an interview with PJ Berger from Princess Craft RV. Stay tuned for this week's episode of Tab Talk. Hi, I'm Jen Grover, and on this week's episode of Tab Talk, I am so excited to share with you some of the details about my week at UCAMP, as well as an interview with PJ Berger, the general manager and owner of Princess Craft RV in Round Rock, Texas. In the weeks leading up to UCAMP, I took a little break from YouTube, and I hope that was okay. I simply needed to catch up with some things. But the good news is, I have a lot of content planned, including a really fun series in the fall. U Camp was simply fabulous. I don't know how many people told me they thought it was the best U Camp to date. I think it was partly because we were all so thrilled to be together after being separated by the pandemic. Unlike 2019, the weather couldn't have been more perfect. At the campground at Winkle Pleck, there were approximately 170 tags, tab 320s, and tab 400s, as well as a couple of tadas present. There was a nice mix of programs, as well as lots of time to relax, enjoy a campfire with friends, and of course, eat. I'm not sure if it was just me, but I had so much fun at U Camp. From beginning to end, it was nothing but smiles from everybody I encountered. Everybody was there ready to have a fabulous time. I love the chance to catch up with old friends, meet many of you for the first time, and really create some great friendships this past week. I really loved meeting all of you, and you were so kind and encouraging to me. I just want to say thank you. Your support means the world to me, and I really appreciate it when you subscribe, like, and share my videos. Some of you asked how you could support the channel and whether I would be offering Patreon memberships. And yes, I will be, so stay tuned and keep your eyes out for those details very soon. If you've tried to purchase a new or used RV, looked for parts or supplies for your RV, maybe you wanna do a mod or maybe something broke, you probably have discovered it's hard to find those things right now. And it has been for the last year, thanks to the camping craze created by the pandemic. I thought it would be really advantageous to talk to somebody who deals with these problems day in and day out to get sort of the 10,000 foot view of the shortages in the RV industry. So I reached out to PJ and she graciously agreed to give me some of her time while we were at U Camp. I think you're really gonna enjoy this conversation that I had with PJ, so let's get started. Hi, I'm here at U Camp and joining me today is PJ from Princess Craft. Now, if you haven't seen PJ's videos, they are about the best walkthrough videos on YouTube when it comes to RV. So Aww, I'm, I'm really you. grateful. PJ was the inspiration for me really being interested in my 2021 Tab 320. So I'm really happy to have PJ here. And as many of you know, the RV industry is sort of chaos right now because everybody wants to camp because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it would be really just interesting to get um, the perspective from the RV dealership's perspective of what they wish customers knew or what they wish they would ask when they come in. Um, because we have a lot of first time RVers mm -hmm. who haven't done as much research probably as previous RV buyers before the pandemic. So, mm -hmm. PJ, would you just share some thoughts about that with us? Oh, gosh, there are so many thoughts. Um, the first thing is, you know, there are so many brand new buyers that have never had a trailer before, any kind of RV, and really haven't done any kind of camping at all. And it, it, the, the, it, 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 it's not that they don't do any research, it's that they don't have any experience. And so they do lots of research, but they don't know how to relate that to real life. And so they don't know what they like. Uh, they don't know, it's kind of like trying to buy a camp chair without sitting in any of them. You can do all the research, but you don't know which one you really like because you haven't tried it on. You haven't sat down and, and tried it. Yeah. So that's been the tough part, I think, for a lot of people during this difficult time and a lot of times they'll go to a dealership and there there isn't one to look at. So when they do get to see one and get in it, they still have lots of questions. Um, you know, I think there's, there's a handful of things that I think if you're a brand new buyer that you need to look at. And one is um, 
sleeping conditions. Make sure that you're comfortable sleeping. Uh, make sure that you are comfortable towing. And then try something. There is absolutely nothing better than trying. And I tell a story, Jen, about buying a sofa years ago when I was young, thinking that it had to do all these things. And when my kids grew up, it had to be one that would work then. And then later on, it would work then. And finally, somebody looked at me and gave me the best advice ever. They said, you know, this is not the last sofa you're ever going to buy, right? What an epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really my best advice is do, do some homework, check some key elements, and then just go out and have some fun because you know what, Jen? Any camper works. That's true. You know, and you think about it, you, you see people come in and they trade in one camper for another one all the time, I'm sure. Right, right. And, the, and there's no shame in that. No. Nah. No, and even the people, I've seen people buy a camper, take it out a few times, and then put it up just within the last few months. And I think mm -hmm. they were like, camping just isn't for me. There's no shame in that either, it's okay. honestly. It's worth it just to try. At least you tried it, right? You know, ice skating is not for me either. Yes. And I owned ice skates at one point in my life. And it is not for me. <laughs> That's awesome. If somebody wanted to buy a tab today, uh -huh. do you have them on the lot? Or is there a wait time? What would that look like for a customer? Okay, that is probably the most misunderstood part of where we are right now. Um, there is a feeling that, you know, the pandemic's getting better. We're all feeling a little more comfortable. Um, we're not wearing masks as much. We've got vaccinations. There's kind of an ease of feel out there, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's great here this week. Yeah. You know? Oh, it has been so amazing. I don't think I've ever gone five days without a mask <laughs> until here. So great. But the, the feel is that that translates to everything else in the world and trailer buying especially. And that is, we are probably in one of the worst situations right now that we have ever been in as manufacturers and dealers because the parts are still so difficult to get. And, uh, you know, people say, why is that? Well, there are so many reasons. Um, there are places overseas that make everything from widgets to plastic pellets to who knows what, some small piece that's used to make things that isn't being made very well right now or not fast enough, and then shipping it here. And then there's the things that are made here. If you can't have one widget or you can't get enough workers, um, it slows it down. There are ships full of parts and pieces. You know, at one point, the whole industry was waiting on toilets. And I didn't matter who I called, everybody said, yeah, there is a huge ship out there full of toilets. But we, for two months, no one can tell us where it is. Wow. And units were not being shipped because they had no toilets. Wow. Isn't that crazy? It is. It really is. I mean, I know um, cushions have been a shortage. There's no cushion. And you know what that's from? Is it from the Texas freeze? Snowmageddon. Yes, I mm -hmm. heard that. that when the, I guess yeah. the windmills shut down and there was a power Shortage. We, we are in power crisis right now. Actually, I got a, a, a text yesterday saying, um, by the way, room temperature is actually 92 degrees. So we need to turn all our thermostats up to the 80s to save power. Yeah, we're running out of power right now in Texas. So, you know, it doesn't make the top news, but it's quite a crisis. But the foam shortage is from when the snow hit the the refineries in Texas had to sh had to do what they call a hard shutdown, and when that happens, um, it takes uh, weeks and sometimes months to get them up and running again. Oh wow! I didn't yeah. have no idea. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. It, they don't just like turn the switches off and then they can turn them right back on because things harden, things quit running, and so they have to get it going again. So. That has been part of the slowdown, so urethane is not being produced out of Texas, uh. which is what they need for foam. So that is holding up everything from furniture to cushions and RVs, I mean, all kinds of things, oh, uh, wow. boat manufacturers, uh, fiberglass has been an issue, trying to get fiberglass 
you know, there was problems with that at one point. Um, yeah, everything just kind of snowballs, and we haven't been flexible enough for whatever reason to get everything running again. And uh, we're here at New Camp. Have you seen all of those trailers behind their yes, building? Yes, uh, there, there are just hundreds of them. H hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trailers waiting on parts. And uh, yeah. so it is, and, and New Camp is not alone. Every manufacturer is in that. Um, I looked yesterday at our inventory. We had 16 trailers that you could buy if you came to Princess Craft. Uh, that's unbelievable. Yeah. I know you're a big dealer. How many typically are on a lot? Three to four hundred. Wow. Available. Yes. I know. I've talked to Scott Hubble, and he at different times has shared the stats of how mm -hmm. many total units they have on, and it's a fraction mm -hmm. of, across the country and in Canada yes. of what they normally have. I mean, yes. it, they're, I think, less than 150, the last I knew, mm -hmm. of tabs, um, tab 320s, tab 400s, and tags all mm -hmm. across the country. And you know what the crazy part is? The crazy part is that every new camp trailer that we're going to get this year is already sold. You're kidding me. It's already sold. Wow. And, and into next year. So it's, and, and we're not alone. No, no, no. We're I know not you're alone. not. That is that. the norm. So it is, it, is, uh, it is really difficult to figure out what customer service means, not only with dealerships, yes. but with manufacturers as well. Well, and then you have to service all the RVs that you're mm -hmm. selling, right? So mm -hmm. what's, it, what's it like to get a service point? I'm hearing months oh. and months. It's, yeah. And there's nothing you can do. I mean, you can only work your employees so many hours a day. That's right. And we only have so many bays. Well, that's true, too. Yeah, so we, and, and we can't get parts. Yeah, the last time I was at New Camp with my trailer, um, there were nine trailers being serviced there, which mm -hmm. I've never seen nine trailers mm -hmm. in there being serviced at once. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think they could fit nine trailers in there, truthfully. It's not a big building. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> and we have a very small lot that we work from. And right now, half of our lot is service units. I have about, I don't know, at one point I had 27 units sitting there in line waiting because once they come and we diagnose the problem, let's say you need a computer board for your water heater. I and the distributors didn't have them. We sit there and wait, and it might be two months before I can get my hands on a on a computer board for your water heater. Oh wow! So everything sits, everything sits. We wait, we look, we ask. Um, we have manufacturers that very nicely say, "Don't call us again." We don't know when we're getting them, and when we do, we'll send it to you. I'm like, okay, our customer just keeps asking, yes. and we don't know what to tell them. So if a dealer tells you, I don't know when I can get the part, they really don't know. Oh, wow. And the manufacturer says, we expect these on Tuesday, but we don't know if they'll really be here. So we'll let you know. This, I think this will be like the type of story we tell the yeah. next generation and the I, next I, generation. It feels that way, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. We'll be like, remember that when that was so crazy? And um, I was, I've told people this weekend, you know, um, after Snowmageddon in Texas, I had to buy a washer. Uh, we didn't have any water for seven days. So I had this, I was like, great, I'll just buy a washer. I couldn't buy a washer. Oh, I know. There was no washers. You can't. Um, my brother's been doing some remodeling, like half of the country is currently mm -hmm. doing. Yes. And getting, well, when you get bored, you remodel, right? Right. Can you imagine how, how much new things went into trailers over the past year? All new the decor mods. and oh, mods yeah. and handmade cabinet doors. Well, the Max Air fans have been very difficult. When I yes. had Maddie Ross built, it was, I wanted that Max Air 7500. I couldn't get one. Right. So I went with the base model, and then this year I swapped it out. Yes. You know, but it's, there are all those things that we love to put in our trailers, short supplies. I haven't seen, like, the Victron components, the solar controllers and the battery monitors and short supply yet. Uh, maybe the fins are doing something right over there. You know, maybe. <laughs> you know, but. maybe. I think more people jumped on that bandwagon in the past two to three years that there has been enough supply because we haven't had solar issues, and that's great because that allows people to boondock, do a lot of different things. Lithium batteries coming on the scene, mm -hmm. so much help yeah. during this time when people just want to get away.
Yeah, I just went with lithium this year. Did you? Oh. And how do you like oh, it? Oh, I love it. I haven't turned my batteries off since April, since wow. I had them installed. Wow. I had, um, actually, Mark with New Camp installed mm-hmm. two 100 amp hour lithium batteries for me. I went with the Lion Energy because mm-hmm. they're so small and light, they fit right between the air conditioner and the bench in the back mm-hmm. part of the tab 320. Right. And then I right. don't have to worry about charging them when it's cold or right. somebody lifting them and taking mm-hmm. them because they cost so much you don't want right. to have them stolen. But yes, it's unbelievable how long that and the, even just the rooftop solar keep it going. Yes. Even in western Pennsylvania where we get so much cloud cover. It's, yes. It's, it's like this type of weather more than it's not. Unlike you guys who Unlike get so us. much sun. It's just hot and sunny where we are. <laughs> yeah. Every day. Yes. Almost. So, yeah, I'm thrilled with the lithium. Good. I think you'll see Good. more people going with lithium. Yeah, and that's a lot of what our service department does, too. Oh, really? Is we do a lot of retrofits. And uh, so that's been good. It's just hard to find the people in the time. Yeah, yeah, I but. know labor. New Camp has, if you drive around, you'll see signs for New uh-huh. Camp. They're hiring. Yeah, and everybody's hiring. Everybody in this area is I'm hiring. hiring. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. Well, that's awesome. PJ, I so appreciate your perspective. I know people watching are going to appreciate it, too, because you hear stories. You know, people share this story mm-hmm. anecdotally. And you're like, is that really the what's going on? Or is that just one person's experience? And right. It sounds like the whole back backlog of parts and labor and everything is just this colossal melting point here that yes. we just have to wait it out and be patient you know and i say you can still camp and have a great time even though the campgrounds are full just change your expectations it's not going to be solitude it's right. not going to be tons of availability where you get the most beautiful site you mm-hmm. ever wanted it's just right size your expectations and camping is a great way to sort of finish off the pandemic That is so smart because, yeah, if you have a trailer at all or if you're able to get your hands on one uh, and start out as a newbie, you know, there is no wrong way to do this. And uh, a day camping where maybe you have a water pump that quits working or you have a problem, it's still so much better then sitting at home wishing you were doing something. It's so true. Then you just work around it. Yeah. You have to be flexible. And, uh, you know, I hate to be the one to always sound like doom and gloom and say that the manufacturers, you know, the, the units are not coming in. We're having all these problems. Um, uh, as, a, as a human race, we think, oh, well, it, you know, that was yesterday. It'll, it'll all get better. But the truth is, it will get better. It will. And it will change. And it will be different next month than this month. And it might be a little worse, and it might be a little better. Yeah. But grab a camper and go. Have some fun. Relax. Yeah. Rent one. I mean, there are yes. a lot available. Outdoorsy, RV share, and a lot of so dealers. Easy do you guys to do. rent them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so if you're in the Texas area, um, PJ's at Princess Craft in Round Rock, Texas. They're a big tab yes. dealer. I, you might be our biggest for all I know. I don't know. Um, but one of the biggest for sure. And but, but, you know, we rent eight trailers. We do it for convenience. Oh, wow, eight. That's yeah, a lot. Eight. Oh, it's not many at all, actually. Really? Oh, there's dealerships with huge rental fleets. Oh, wow. But, there, I mean, it's one of the great things that has happened in the past few years. Outdoorsy really paved the way for it, and now there's so many apps and groups out there where you can rent from individuals, you can rent, uh, it's, it's so easy to rent something. And that's a great way to try them on. Yeah. To sit in the different kinds of chairs and absolutely. see what you like. Absolutely. But there is absolutely no excuse not to get out there right now. Even if maybe your rig isn't exactly what you want to have in the very end game, you know, that's not what this is about. That's right. It's not about the end game. That's right. It's about the journey. And as it sounds like it ought to be, you know, on a plaque on the wall, but it's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, PJ. I really appreciate the time you've taken oh, thanks, to talk Jen. today. I always love visiting with you. All righty. I hope you found the conversation I had with PJ helpful. I know I learned a lot, so I hope you did as well. I'd love it if you'd share what challenges you're facing in terms of finding a new trailer, parts, supplies, or even campsites. Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.